Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang functions and relations. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so ngayon ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang isa sa pinakamahalagang topic sa math, which is yung function. So, yung function, siya yung ginagamit para mag-denote tayo ng relationship between two variables. So, mamaya ay magbibigay ako sa inyo ng examples ng functions. Pero ngayon, magsimula muna tayo sa definition ng relations. Okay, so ano ba ang relations? So, bigyan ko kayo ng example. So, halimbawa, kung makita kayo ng 50 pesos an hour. Then, yung earnings nyo ay related doon sa number of hours na tinabaho nyo. And one way of expressing this relationship is to write it in a set of ordered pairs. So, ano ba yung ordered pairs? So, for example, 2, 100. So, yung 2, siya yung number of hours na itatrabahuhin mo and then yung 100, siya yung kikitain mo. So, since 50 pesos per hour, so 2 hours times 50 is 100. So, one ordered pair for the relationship of your earning and the number of hours you work. Same as kung meron kang 20 comma 100. So, ordered pair ulit siya na nagre-relate doon sa tinabaho mong oras sa kikitain mo. So, kung 20 hours ka nag-work, meron kang 100 peso na kikitain. Or sorry, 1,000 peso na kikitain kasi 20 times 50 is 1,000. Okay, so... Ito yung tinatawag natin na relation, a set of ordered pairs. Okay, so define natin ng relation. So a relation is any set of ordered pair. The set of all the first coordinates is called the domain of the relation. The set of all the second coordinates is called the range. Okay, so kapag nagsusulat tayo ng relation, dahil ito ay set, gumagamit tayo ng symbol na ganito. Okay? And then, ini-enclose natin doon yung set of ordered pairs. So, kapag nagsusulat tayo ng ordered pairs, gumagamit tayo ng parenthesis and then two numbers inside, separated by a comma. So, for example, itong set na to ay may ordered pairs na 1 comma 3, negative 4 comma 2, 0 comma 8, and 9 comma 3. So, automatic isa siyang relation kasi set siya ng ordered pairs. Tapos, sabi, yung first coordinates is called the domain. So, yung set daw, Nung first coordinates dito sa relations natin ay tinatawag na domain. So, susulat mo lang kung ano yung mga first number doon sa bawat ordered pair. So, ano-ano yun? 1, negative 4, 0, 9. Okay? And then, yung range naman, the set of all the second coordinates. So, susulat mo rin siya as a set. Enclose mo sa dito sa bracket. And then, susulat mo naman doon sa... Relation mo yung second number doon sa bawat ordered pair. So, ano-ano yun? 3, 2, 8, 3. So, we have 3, comma 2, comma 8. And then, since naulit na itong 3, huwag na natin isulat kasi isusulat lang natin dapat yung element ng isang asset as 1. Okay? Okay, so yun yung basic definition of relation. So, ngayon, ay bibigyan ko pa kayo ng illustrative examples para ma-distinguish natin ang isang relations. So, one, we have the set of 1, 3, 5, 7. So, it is not a relation because, obviously, hindi siya set of ordered pairs kasi, di ba, mga elements lang yung nasa loob, wala kang parenthesis na merong pair of numbers. So, dapat meron kang numbers like 2, 4, 3, 6, 5, 4, etc. So, ito yung mga ordered pairs, which is dito sa example natin ay hindi kasi hindi naman ordered pair. So, not a relation. Next, The set of 2,3, 4,5. So, it is not a relation but just a set of set. Kasi napansin nyo, hindi pa rin this is yung ginamit niya dito. Right? Which is bracket din. Which is kapag gumagamit tayo ng bracket, di ba nire-represent natin yun as a set? So, not a ordered, not an ordered pair. So, dapat para makonsider to as a relation, dapat pa rin this is yung ginamit. Okay? Next, the set of 1,4, 2,5, 3,6, yes, it is a relation kasi lahat sila ay set of ordered pairs. So, meron dalawang number na nasa-separate by a comma. And then, kung haanapin natin yung domain, yun yung mga first elements or yung first number dun sa ordered pairs. So, ano yun? 
the set of 1, 2, 3. Ito, diba? 1, 2, 3. And then, yung range, yung pangalawang number dun sa ordered pair. Ano ba yun? Yung 4, 5, and 6. So, the range is 4, 5, 6. Okay? Next, we have x plus y equals 1. So, this time, meron tayong equation. So, meron tayong dalawang variables na x and y. Which, kung iisipin nyo, ay pwede natin niyang i-plot right kasi ito ay equation of a line. So, alam naman natin, di ba, mag-plot ng ordered pair sa rectangular coordinate system. So, therefore, pwede natin itong makonsider as a relation. Since nga, it can be thought of a set of ordered pairs like the set of 0, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 0, 2 comma negative 1, 3 comma negative 2, 4 comma negative 3, negative 1 comma 2, negative 2 comma 3, and so on. Kasi kapag sinapsitit natin itong, let's say itong 0 tsaka 1 dito sa equation na to, masasatisfy natin yung equation. So lahat ng ordered pairs na to ay nagsasatisfy dito sa given natin na relation, which is itong equation natin na x plus y equals 1. So therefore, it is a relation. And then yung Domain natin dito ay yung set of first numbers. Ano-ano ba yun? So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, and so on. Okay? And then, yung range, siya naman yung second number doon sa ordered pair. So, ano-ano yun? 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 2, 3, and so on. Sorry, ito ay positive. Next, we have the graph at the right which shows points on the Cartesian coordinate plane can be thought of as a set of ordered pairs. So, sabi ko nga, kapag nag-graph tayo ng points doon sa rectangular coordinate system, syempre, meron tayong ordered pair, which is already a type of relation kung ginawa natin silang isang set. So, halimbawa, itong line na to, meron tayong ordered pairs na negative 2 kama negative 3, negative 1 comma negative 1, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 3, and 2 comma 5. Kung kinumbay natin sila as isang set, therefore, magkakaroon tayo ng relation. Okay? So, ito yung relation natin. Set of ordered pairs. And then, pwede ulit natin mahanap yung domain. So, lista mo lang kung ano yung first number doon sa set of ordered pairs. So, we have negative 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 0. And then, for the range, yun naman yung pangalawang coordinate kung ano-ano yon So, ano-ano ba yon Negative 3, negative 1, 5, 3, 1. Okay? Next, we have 6. The set of 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 4, negative 2. So, obviously, this is a relation kasi meron tayong set of ordered pairs. Okay? And then, yung domain, yung mga first element ng ordered pairs natin. So, ano na yun? 0, 1. Since naulit dito yung 1, susulat lang natin yan as 1. Same as dito sa 4. Since naulit ulit yung 4, susulat lang natin yan as isang 4. And then, dun sa range, yung mga second coordinate ulit. So, ano na yun? 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Okay. So, kung papansinin natin yung example natin, 3, 4, 5, itong 1 tsaka 2 kasi hindi naman yan mga relations. Itong 3, 4, 5 lang yung papansinin natin. Mapapansin no na for each first coordinate, okay, iisa lang yung second coordinate nila. Unique. Same as dito sa 4. For each coordinate na to, iisa lang din yung second coordinate na na-pair sa kanila. Unique din. So, sa 5, ganun din. So, sa negative 2, negative 1, 2, 1, and 0, iisa lang yung mga pair nila na second coordinate. At nagdito sa 6, etong for example, itong 1, na-pair siya sa dalawang numbers, which is yung 1, tsaka negative 1. Ito ring 4, na-pair sa dalawang numbers para din sa second coordinate. Sa 2, tsaka sa negative 2. So, yung difference na yon masasabi natin na yung 3, 4, 5 ay functions samantalang yung 6 naman ay not functions. Okay, so ano ba ibig sabihin ko kung bakit ko nasabing hindi functions saka functions yung number 3, 4, 5, and 6? So ngayon, define natin kung ano ba yung functions para mas malinawan tayo. So ano ba ang function? So a function is a relation in which 1, for each first coordinate, there is exactly one second coordinate. And 2, for every first element x, there corresponds a unique second element y. Okay, so note down na every function is a relation 
but some relations are not functions. So, halimbawa nga sa example natin dun sa taas, so di ba yung 3, 4, 5, 6, para-paro silang relations, pero yung 3, 4, 5, sabi ko, ayun yung functions, pero yung 6 ay not a function, but simply a relation. So, ito yung note natin na yun. So, ibig sabihin daw ng function, dapat kung meron kang relation, yung first set of ordered pairs mo ay naka-pair lang sa unique second coordinate. So, kapag nalabag yon hindi na yon function. So, para may illustrate, mag-solve tayo ng example. So, sabi, determine whether which of the following relations are functions. So, check nyo yung mga first elements. So, so yung 4 na pairs sa 10, yung 2 na pairs sa 8, and then, naulit yung 4, na pair din siya sa negative 7. So, obviously, dahil na pair yung 4 sa dalawang second element ng ordered pairs, which is 10 tsaka negative 7, therefore, not a function. Next, 2. 1, comma 4, negative 7, comma 3, negative 1, comma 2, 8, comma 4. So, check natin yung first element kung na pair ba siya sa unique second element. So, yung 1 sa 4, yung negative 7 sa 3, yung negative 1 sa 2, then, yung 8 sa 4. Okay, so, walang naulit, right? So, huwag kayo malilito, diba, dito sa 1, comma 4, tsaka 8, comma 4. Naulit yung 4. Pero, function pa rin yun kasi ang rule natin, dapat yung first element mo, iisa lang yung kanyang second element. Which is, wala tayong na-violate, right? Kasi, 1, negative 7, negative 1, 8. Pare-paro silang magkakaiba yung second, pe second set of elements. Okay, so therefore, function. Okay? Next, we have 6, negative 1, negative 7, 5, 8, negative 1, negative 2, 0. So, check ulit natin yung mga first element kung na-pair ba 1 sa second element. So, 6 sa negative 1, negative 7 sa 5, 8 sa negative 1, negative 2 sa 0. So, unique yung bawat second element nung bawat unique first element. So, therefore, function. Next, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So, obviously, function, right? Kasi na-pair lang yung bawat first element sa unique second element. Okay? So, function. Next, negative 3, 2, negative 4, 2, and negative 5, 2. Okay? So, we have negative 3 na pair sa 2, negative 4 na pair sa 2, negative 5 na pair sa 2. So, yung bawat unique natin na first element na pair din doon sa unique second element na 2. So, kahit pare-paro sila nung second element na 2, pero magkaiba naman yung bawat first element considered per nyon as a function. Okay? Now, meron tayong iba't ibang representations of functions. So, a function can be represented by using a table of values or a set of ordered pairs of numbers by mapping, by picture or graph, by equation, and by rule or correspondence expressed in words. So, ngayon alam na natin kung paano mag-determine ng isang function. So, alamin naman natin kung ano-ano ba ang way ng pagre-represent ng function. So, meron tayong example dito. So, Ruel M. Lano, a working student, works in Happy Bee Food House. As a waiter, he earns 40 pesos for every hour of service. Represent the earnings of Ruel as a function of hours he works. So, kung i-represent natin itong function dito sa statement natin using table of values, so, gawa tayo ng row for number of hours or each and then row for the earnings. Okay, so, Random lang na number yung ilalagay natin. So, let's say 10 hours, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, ito yung number of hours na nagtrabaho siya. And then, masasolve natin yung kikitain niya by multiplying lang yung uh, rate niya per hour na 40 pesos doon sa number of hours he works. So, for 10, we have 400 pesos. For 11, we have 440. For 12, we have 480. For 13, we have 520. For 14, we have 560. For 15, we have 600. And for 16, we have 640. So, ito yung one way of representing the earnings of Rowell as a function of R's work using table of values. 
Next, using set of ordered pairs naman. So, kung ito yung mga na lagay nating mga values, convert lang natin to as a set of ordered pairs. So, yung first element natin ay yung 10, ay yung H, and yung second element natin ay yung E. Okay, so, therefore, we have the set of, for 10 and 400, we have 10, 400, and then 11, 440, 12, 480, 13, 520, 14, 600, 15, 600, sorry, ito ay 14, 560, and then 15, 600, and then last, 16, 640. Okay, so set of ordered pairs naman yung nirepresent natin doon sa function natin exam. Yun sa example function natin. Now, next we have the mapping. So, sa mapping, gagawa lang tayo ng, uh, let's say, circle na dalawa. So, yung isa para dun sa H, yung number of hours na he works. And then, yung isa para sa E ay yung earnings niya. So, dito sa H, sulat lang natin kung ano-ano yung nilagay natin na number of RC works. So, diba 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then, yung corresponding payments niya for specific number of hours we have. So, sa 10, diba 400. Sa 11, 440. Sa 12, 480. Sa 13, 520. Sa 14, 560. Sa 15, 600, and lastly for 16, 640. So, pag mapping, imamap nyo yung saan nakapair yung H doon sa E. So, pwedeng araw lang, 11 to 460, 12 to 480, 13 to 520, 14 to 560, 15 to 600, 16 to 640. So, eto nakuha lang natin doon sa ordered pairs din natin which is also the same doon sa table of values. It's just that gagawin mo lang silang in mapping form. So, ganito yung itsura nila. Okay? So, sa mapping, meron tayong iba't ibang types. So, meron tayong one-to-one -one correspondence, many-to-one -one correspondence, at one-to-many correspondence. So, doon muna tayo sa one-to-one. -one. So, kapag one-to-one -one daw, each element in X pairs with one. only one element in Y. So, parang itong example natin, di ba? Yung bawat first element dito sa H or kung ginamit natin na X, pwede rin, ay nakapair doon sa second element natin na Y or this time, yung ginamit ko. So, once lang. So, so bawat X ay may corresponding unique value doon sa Y. So, parang tapat-tapat lang sila. So, Another example will be parang din yan. So, A, B, C, 2, 1, 2, 3. So, map mo lang. And then, 1 to 1 correspondence na yan. Okay? Next, we have the many to 1 correspondence. So, many, more than 1 numbers in X pair with the same number in Y. So, gawa tayo ng bilog. So, random example na lang tayo. So, let's say... 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3. And then we have 1, 4, 9. So let's say ito yung x, yung first element. And then ito yung y. So pag pinair ko itong 1 sa 1, tsaka negative 1 sa 1, as well as itong 2 sa 4, then negative 2 sa 4 then and then itong 3 sa 9, and then itong negative 3 sa 9 then so, meron tayong many to one. So, from the word itself, kasi many na na-pair sa isang single element sa y. So, itong many na to, itong one tsaka negative one, na-pair doon sa one lang. Same as ito sa two negative two, na-pair sa four, then three negative three, na-pair sa nine. So, many to one, literal lang. Okay? Next, we also have the one to many correspondence. One number in x is paired with different numbers in y. So, ganun din. Para may illustrate, gawa akong bilog. So, let's say x and y element tayo. So, let's say sa x, meron tayong domain na 1 and then tsaka 5. Doon sa range naman ay yung y second element. Let's say meron tayong 2, 3, 4, 6, 10, 11. So, kapag 1 to many, yung, so yung bawat element mo doon sa ordered pair, yung first element mo, naka-pair, let's say itong 1 sa 2, 
3, 4. And then, itong 5 na compare sa 6, 10, 11. So, ito yung example ng 1 to many kasi yung isang element mo doon sa domain mo ay nakapair doon sa maraming uh, value doon sa second element y. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, alin dito sa mga mapping techniques ang madedetermine natin kung function o hindi. So, obviously, itong 1 to many ay hindi kasi nalabag niya yung functions na pair yung isang number sa multiple number of second element. Okay? And then, itong many to one, function siya kasi hindi nga man nalabag yung rule ng function. So, for every first element, there corresponds a unique second element. Okay? And then, also, itong 1 to 1 correspondence, obviously, function din kasi na pair lang doon sa unique second element y kasi nga 1 to 1 sila. Okay? So, function din yung 1 to 1. Okay, so ito na nga yung note. A 1 to 1 correspondence and a many to 1 correspondence are called functions while the 1 to many correspondence is not. Okay, so take note nyo to lagi. Now, i-represent naman natin yung relation natin o function natin by graphing. So, literally, i-graph lang natin yung ordered pairs na nabuo natin kanina. So, we have the ordered pair, 10, 400. So, ito yon. Also, 11, 440. So, ito yon. 12, 480. Ito yun. We have 13, 520. And then, 14, 560. So, ito. Then, we have 15, 600. So, ito. And then, last, we have 16, 640. So, ito. So, basically, para lang kayong nag-graph ng line. Kasi nga, meron kayong sets of points which are ordered pairs. So, pwede nyo siyang i-graph sa X and Y axis or rectangular coordinate system. Okay? So, connect lang natin yung line. Yan. Okay? Now, let's represent the function as a rule or correspondence expressed in words or equation. So, base dun sa graph natin dito at saka dun sa table natin, masasabi natin na ang rule para doon sa earning ni Rowell ay... Ita times nyo lang yung halaga ng per hour niya in peso doon sa number of hours that he worked ay masasolve na natin yung total earnings ni Rowell. So, pwede natin yung isulat in words as the total earnings of Rowell is 40 pesos times the number of hours he worked. So, sensible naman, di ba? Kasi, imumultiply nyo lang yung per hour nga kung ilang oras doon sa number of hours na nag-work siya within a day. Okay, so ito yung rule or correspondence nung example functions natin. So, pwede rin natin itong i-rewrite as an equation. So, let's say, uh, we have E as the total earnings of Ruel and then H is the number of RC work then di ba ito yung rule natin so kapag ginawa natin tong equation pwede natin i-represent to as the total earnings of Ruel is equal to 40 pesos times the number of RC work okay so ito yung magiging equation natin base dun sa rule or correspondence natin na in na expressed in words. Okay, so aside from this variable, pwede rin tayong gumamit ng function notation. So, for example, itong E, E of H is equal to 40H. Meaning, itong E ay function noong H. Nakadepende doon sa H, yung value ng H, yung magiging value ng E. Kasi nga, kung ilan, kung ilan man yung oras na tinabaho niya, nakadepende nga doon kung ilan yung magiging kita niya, which is multiply mo lang sa 40 pesos. Okay? So, other functional notation, let's say f of x is equal to any uh, algebraic expressions 
with variable x. Kasi yun yung naka-enclose natin sa parenthesis. So, let's say, x squared plus 1. So, function of x siya. So, yung x natin dito, siya yung independent variable. And then, yung f of x natin, siya yung dependent variable. Na usually, itong f of x, pwede yung i-represent as y. So, para magkaroon tayo ng coordinate na x and y. Okay, so kung ano yung value ng x, doon nakadepende yung magiging value mo ng y. At magkakaroon ka ng ordered pair as a point, which is x, y. Okay? Now, meron tayong iba't ibang characteristics para matest natin kung ang relation ba ay isang function. So, sabi, the following characteristics of a function will help us decide when we test for a function when two sets of numbers or figures are given. So, ito ito yung mga dapat nating tandaan para malaman natin kung ang relation ay isa bang function. So, number one, each element in X must be matched with an element in Y. Okay. Two, some elements in Y may not be matched with any element in X. So, dito sa one, dapat daw para function, lahat daw ng element ng X magamit o ma-pair sa element in Y. Tapos, ito naman sa 2, some elements in Y may not be matched with any element in X. So, pwede rin walang value, yung, walang match yung Y o yung second ordered pair doon sa X. Pero dapat, laging yung X mo, according sa 1, ay merong nakamatch doon sa uh, element noong Y. Okay? 3, 2 or more elements in X may be matched with the same element in Y. So, ito nga yung 1 to many na example, which is a function din naman base dun sa natutunan natin kanina. Okay? Now, meron akong samples para ma-practice tayo mag-determine kung function ba yung isang relation. Okay? So, let x be the set 1, 2, 3 and y be the set a, b, c, d, e. Now, determine which of the following sets of ordered pairs or figures represent a function from set x to set y. Okay? So, dito tayo sa a. So, mapapansin nyo, itong set natin, itong set of ordered pairs natin, yung domain niya o yung first element niya ay 1, 2, 3. So, nagamit lahat noong element doon sa x. So, pasok siya dun sa criteria. And then, dito sa second coordinate for each ordered pairs, we have A, C, E. So, A, C, E. So, tatlo lang yung nagamit doon sa kabuang elements ng y, which is acceptable pa rin kasi base dun sa karakteristik to ng function. Na pwede hindi magamit lahat ng element doon sa y or dun sa second coordinate. So therefore, this one is a function. And also, it is a function since yung bawat element ng 2, uh, bawat element ng x ay na-pair exactly once doon sa element in y. Okay? Next, we have b. The set of ordered pairs, 1 comma C and 3 comma B. Okay, so check natin kung nagamit ba lahat ng elements dun sa X. So dun sa first coordinate tayo, 1, 3. So kung mapapansin nyo, nagkulang tayo ng element na 2. So therefore, yung criteria pa lang nung 1 ay nalabag niya na. So therefore, hindi na siya function kasi dapat magagamit natin lahat ng elements nung X dun sa relation. Okay? Next, we have C, the mapping. So, dito sa first element, so meron tayong 1, 2, 3. And then, dito sa second element na Y, may A, B, C, D, E. Base din dito sa given. Ngayon, check natin yung pairing. Doon sa X, na-pair yung 1, 2, 3 sa isang element ng Y. So, sa silang. So, ano mapapansin nyo? Anong type of mapping yon? Many to 1, right? So, therefore... Alam natin na ang many to one ay isang function. So, therefore, C is a function. Okay? Then, sa D. Okay, meron din ulit tayong elements 1, 2, 3. And then, yung for sa, para, para sa first coordinate, para sa first element. And then, meron tayong A, B, C, D, E para sa second element. Okay, so, check natin yung pairing. Doon sa 1, na-pair siya sa A tsaka B. Tapos yung 2 na pair sa C and then yung 3 na pair sa D at E. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ano siya? 1 to many. Which is according dun sa definition natin at notes, hindi yun function. Kasi nga, na pair more than once yung domain doon sa element noong range. Okay? So, therefore, not function. Okay? Now, we have number 2. Determine which of the following equations represents y as a function of x. So, this time, equation yung given sa atin. 
Now, kapag ganito yung given sa atin, since sabi kung y daw as a function of x, isolve natin yung y in terms of x explicitly. So, y lang dun sa left side na naka-equate doon sa variable, doon sa expression, doon sa variable natin na x. So, we have transpose si negative x squared sa positive x squared and then si positive 1 magiging negative 1 kasi tinanspose natin itong dalawa. Okay? Now, mamapansin nyo, itong nabuo nating function, y as a function of x, or pwede rin tong f of x is equal to x squared minus 1. Base dun sa notation na binigay ko, obviously, function siya kasi kahit ano namang input mong value dito sa x, let's say from 0 to infinity, iisa pa rin yung magiging value mo ng y. So, unique. So, therefore, it is a function. Okay? So, function. Next, we have b, y squared plus 1 equals x. So, ganun ulit, solve natin si y in terms of x. So, we have y squared plus 1 is equal to x. Transpose natin dito si 1. So, y squared is equal to x minus 1. Then, para masolve natin itong y, erase natin both sides by 1 half, right? Radical. So, cancel dito si 2. So, y na lang yung left side. And then, itong right side ay parang x minus 1 quantity raised to 1. Di ba yung 1 half equivalent dyan sa square root? So, parang square root of x minus 1. But this time, meron tayong plus saka minus. Kasi kapag square root, di ba pwedeng maging uh, positive or negative yung isang base. Pero same pa rin yung magiging power. So, dalawa yung solution natin. So, now check natin kung y is a function of x ba. Kaso, kung mapapansin nyo, kung meron kang value dito na let's say 5 sa x, Pag sinapitid mo yon, magiging plus minus square root of 5 minus 1 or simply y is equal to plus minus square root of 4. So, we have y is equal to plus minus 2. So, therefore, sa isang value natin ng x na 5, pwede kang magkaroon ng dalawang value for y which is yung isa ay positive 2 and then yung isa ay negative 2. So, therefore, na pair more than once yung isang element doon sa x na doon sa domain natin. So, therefore, automatically, it is not a function. Right? So, not a function. Okay? Okay, next we have the vertical line test. So, a graph in the plane represents a function provided that no vertical line intersects the graph at more than one point. So, since natin ba yung isang representation natin ng function ay true graph, so pwede natin i-graph yung function sa rectangular coordinate system where yung kakaroon tayo ng x and y coordinate or ordered pair. Then, kapag nag-graph tayo at napansin natin na pag nag-drawing tayo ng vertical line doon sa graph, ay may intersect nung line na yon yung graph at two points. Therefore, it is not a function. Okay, so illustrate natin. Which of the following graphs represents y as a function of x? So, sabi sa vertical line test, so literally, mag-drawing ka ng vertical line. So, mag-drawing tayo ng vertical line. So, kahit saan ang uh, portion dun sa graph. So, let's say dito na lang. Okay? Now, kung mapapansin nyo, diba ito yung graph natin? Nag-intersect siya dito sa vertical line natin at ilang points. So, dalawa. Ito, diba? Tsaka, ito. So, therefore, using the vertical line test, malalaman natin na hindi function itong graph na to kasi nag-intersect nga siya doon sa vertical line natin at two points. So, dapat isa lang para makonsider natin siya na function. So, not function. B. So, drawing ako ng isang vertical line. Yan. So, dito sa vertical line na din drawing ko, nag-intersect lang siya at one point. So, hanap pa tayo ng ibang vertical line dun sa ibang part nung graph. So, kahit dito, isa lang din. Tapos dito, isa lang din. Tapos dito, isa lang din. So, therefore, kahit infinite ka mag-draw ng vertical line dito sa graph na to, isa lang yung point na magiging intersection ng vertical line na yon doon sa graph. So, therefore, ito ay function. Okay? Next, we have C. So, okay, draw ulit tayo ng vertical line. So, dito muna sa portion na to. So, nag-intersect at one point lang. Then, dito rin, one point lang. Then, dito, one point. Then, dito, one point. And so on. Kasi nyo, kahit mag-draw tayo ng infinite vertical lines, itong graph natin ay mag-intersect lang dun sa mga vertical line na yon at only 
one point. So therefore, this is a function. Next, we have d. So obviously, kahit mag-draw din tayo ulit ng infinite vertical line across doon sa graph natin na given, laging intersection lang nila ay 1 point. Right? So therefore, by vertical line test, this graph is a function. Okay? Okay, so that's it for the topic functions and relations. Uh, so basically, a relation is just a set of ordered pairs and a relation can be a function. So, ang, ang function sa special case ng relation kung saan ang first coordinate mo ay napipair lang exactly once doon sa second coordinate or second pair doon sa second element. So, there is a unique second element for every first element. Okay? So, meron tayong iba't ibang representations for uh, function. So, dapat alam natin yon And then, alam din natin mag-distinguish ng function sa hindi. Okay? So, that's it for this topic. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.